Hey, time for another vlog. Got another project going. I uh, wanted to start this one off. Uh, hoping everybody had a good Christmas, a good New Year's. Project wise, I posted the reveal video the other day. Gotten some comments and stuff on it. Uh, for the uh, new lighted signage, both the hour sign and the rule sign. Which are sitting right there for the moment. Haven't had a chance to get them put away yet. Uh, getting ready to start on the next project. We are going to stay on the light box theme and I'm going to do an upgrade on a project into some smaller light boxes. A little bit different style so I'll probably have some foobahs in this vlog and I don't know if I'll cover them or not. Don't know. You never know. When you're doing something new you always have at least one mess up. But uh, this new project is going to be on the photos from my photo haul. And you all recognize that little face I bet. Or that one. Those were uh, some pictures sent in to me on some of the subscriber contests I've had in the past. But these here are some pictures I did. They're uh, scene setter pictures. And I've got ex uh, copies of these out in the shop. But uh, the picture frames, I carved out a foam and did some detail work, all the detail work with caulking and what have you. Oh God, four or five years ago. And they hang in my photo hall. Uh, problem that we always have with them is I always mount an LED, two LEDs. One up here in this corner, one down in this corner, and the LEDs shine down on the pictures. Supposedly, so people can see the pictures. Problem is, is the lights end up glaring off the plexiglass in here, and you really can't see the pictures overly much. You can tell there are pictures there because of the picture frames. You just can't see what's in the pictures. So, uh, I figure I am going to replicate these instead of doing a uh, uh, foam frame, I'm going to do a plywood frame for it and then attach a box on the back that I can put some of those RGB lights in and turn them into little light boxes. And I've got quite a few of them to do. I think there are 16 of them all together. Uh, but that is what our project's going to be. Now the majority of the project is going to be done out in the shop and stuff. So you, uh, you'll get most of the footage out there. There are some steps I'm going to have to do in here like installing the lights and what have you. Okay, we made it out into the shop. Uh, plywood. And it's an inch thick sheet of plywood. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, about the nicest grade they had down there at Home Depot. It's about 36 bucks for a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet. I've got all the measurements here on this paper that I need for all the uh, picture frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting some blanks cut out. In other words, I'm going to run this across the table saw and cut out the rough sizes or outside dimensions for each of the picture frames. Uh, once that's done, we've got to get the hole cut out in the middle of each frame for the pictures, which I'll be using the scroll saw for. But they've all been cut out, marked, numbered. Uh, the old picture frames have a number on them so I can correspond the picture with the uh, right blank. Uh, next job with these is I need to get a ruler out and mark out the holes I need to cut on all of them. And then it's simply sitting down running them over the scroll saw and then the rough picture frames will be done. Okay, uh, we're continuing our work. We've got all our blanks out. I've brought out a few of the picture frames. Now all the picture frames I went and I numbered. You know, so like this one's number seven. The one I've got up here on the table is number eight. And when I cut, I wrote down the measurements that I wanted, I marked them so I knew which blank went with which picture. Now, with this one, here's the original foam frame I made that went around this guy. I went and I took it apart, obviously. I need to save the plexiglass because I'll be able to reuse that with the new pictures. And I've also trimmed down the pictures a bit, too, so I can get the exact size. That way I can get my hole exactly the way I want it. Now I need to get this centered on the blank. I can trace out my hole for the picture. 
but since this is also going to be an, uh, one of the oval ones, I need to trace out the oval around. And I've got a lot, I left a lot of extra room on the ovals because almost all of them aren't a solid oval all the way around. They have a detail up on top. So uh, I, I'll maneuver this picture up and down on the blank and then do the outside edge and detailing as well. But I've got to do this for each of the pictures. So that's my next step. Okay, another segment, finally. Uh, it's been over a week since the last segment. I've been busy with other things and it's taken a while to cut these out. But we got all the picture frames cut out and we got some different shapes. Most of the ovals I went and did this pattern on the corners just to change them up. Uh, now that they're all cut out, I need to go back through and sand the inside and the outside of them. And there's some detail work and stuff to do on them too. Uh, I'm going to try on the old picture frames I used uh, caulking to do different patterns, different designs on each of the uh, frames. Uh, with these, I am going to use a different technique on them. So, uh, not sure how I'm, how I'm going to quite do it yet, but I need to do go through and detail after they're sanded, go through and do the detail work on them. I also need to turn them over and cut a groove into it to accept the uh, pictures in the plexiglass. So that's pretty much our next step on it. But we've got these done. I'm not exactly sure on the count. Originally I had 16 photos to do. Uh, first ones were these uh, scene setter ones, which are going to be light boxes. And then I had five of these. And there's Josh. And Scary Mary. <laughs> uh, those it's come down to the point where I am going to, it's, it's going to end up being a double project. With the scene setter pictures, I can use the RGB lights. They work fine. With the Haunter photos, these here, all these are our printer paper. And I went and took the pictures and printed them out off my printer. The RGB lights, I've done some testing with them, don't look right shining through the paper. And I want to add lights to them, so I'm going to do a little bit different technique uh, with these photos. I think what I'm going to do is actually embed LEDs at the level of the plexiglass and have it shine out to highlight the picture instead of having it shine through the back. But uh, anyway, originally I had five photos. I had a lot of scrap wood left, so I went up and I did some additional frames and god what was it 2011 2012 i did subscriber contests on my youtube channel and what we ended up doing is i had people submit photos of themselves dressed up in their costumes and then i had the people going through my haunt vote on their favorite pictures that's how we got the winners well i saved all those photos and at that time i told people you know, I was going to do the picture frames, and I'll be adding to them over the course of the years, and I would like to use their pictures, and everyone gave me, at that time, their permission. Whether they remember giving me their permission or not, I don't know. So I'm going to find out. But I've got a lot of uh, Haunter photos, so, like I said, <laughs> I've got a lot, of, a lot of picture frames. So I'm not sure exactly how many new Haunter photos we're going to have in the haunt, but... We're going to have some uh, additional photos in the haunt this year. Now, something else, too, I'm going to touch on real quick. Instagram. I did start an Instagram account. Most of the people on my Facebook account, I've invited to like the page and, or follow the page and what have you. There's not much on it yet, but I am going to be posting the photos, uh, some photos of this project up on the page and you know, and other things throughout the course of the year. Uh, I'll put information down below in the description. You know, come join me over on Instagram. Follow me on there. Hey, hey, you guys still there? <laughs> Another segment for you. Uh, we've made it quite a ways on the uh, uh, picture frames. Or at least I think we have. 
Uh, I've got two different styles of frames, as I've explained in previous segments. These here, this type here, is going to be uh, have the RGB lights in them. And then this one over here is going to be for Haunter photos. Uh, on the RGB, RGB ones, I'm ready to start adding some detail, I think. Uh, I've gone through, I've gotten cut out the shape, got them, uh, the hole cleaned out in the center, and I've taken a router, gone over the inside with one bit, used a different bit on the outside to shape that up, and it's been sanded. And then on the inside, I took my router and I cut a groove in here. The uh, plexiglass and picture will fit down into there. So at this point, these are ready for detail work. And I've got to decide on the detail work, whether I want to just paint detailing on it, or do I want to uh, carve it, carve into the frame and do the detail work. Or do, like I did on the other ones, I used caulking on the other ones, my old ones, and had the detail work standing out on it. I'm not sure what I want to do yet with that. I'm going to be messing around with some scrap and figuring out what I want to do. Uh, now on the photo hall ones, or I'm on the photo halls, but the haunt photo pictures, which are going in here, I went through all the same steps as I did on the RGB, with an exception, you notice I cut some extra grooves in it. And like I explained in an earlier segment, I can't use RGB lights on it because of the uh, paper that the photos are printed on. So what I'm, I wanted to do, I went and got an LED, and the LED is basically just going to sit in a slot like that, you know, back in the frame, and then the light will shine out on the picture, hopefully. And then this groove here is for the wiring. So I can wire these up and actually have the wiring embedded into the frame itself with it coming out the top of the photo. So I went and did that, and I know my lines are not really straight for the groove, I really wasn't worried about it. But I really wasn't worried about the lines being straight. Uh, the very last step in this process is I'm going to be getting some plywood, real thin stuff, and that's going to cover the back of it up and seal it. So you won't even, I won't even see that anyway. But uh, I just didn't want to mount the uh, wire to the surface because that would hold the plywood up off the frame. And I want the uh, plywood going right against the picture frame. So I, I, anyway, I've got down, done with that detailing, and I've got to go through and start, you know, figuring out what I want to do for detail. If I'm going to just paint them and paint on the detail, which is what I am really seriously thinking about doing, because that'd be the quickest and easiest way to go, then I can just start painting. If I want to do any type of other type of detail work, non-painting, that adds to the project. So I got to figure out what I'm doing. I've gotten my rough details done on all the frames. And I figured I'd give you a show, a show on them, or excuse me, segment on them, before I take them into paint, because none of them have been painted yet. Uh, I did three different styles of detailing work. Uh, for the Haunter frames, the ones that are going to have pictures of fellow Haunters in them, I uh, so I'm going to add some bling to them. Uh, when I do my papier-mâché skulls and stuff. I use gems for the eyes and the mouth and detail work. have a crap ton of those gems left. So I'm going to be adding some gems and these holes here are to recess some of the gems and then I'll be adding some bigger gems up in the corners or a paper clay skull or something along that line. And I've got several different patterns. Some have more gems than others. Uh, this one here is a combo. It's going to have the smaller gems and the large gems. You know, each one, you know, each one's a little bit different pattern. You know, they look a little bit different. You know, I can add, I've got four, five different colors of gems, you know, so I can mix them up. So we got that done. The other style I did, and I did just on the three barge frames, uh, back before I got into haunting, I did a lot of woodworking. I used to do a lot of toys and what have you, and I had a bunch of spare parts that had been sitting around for over a decade. And I figured, well, I'm going to use them. So on the three larger frames, I went and took some large wheels, cut them in half, did detail work on this one, and I'll probably paint a detail 
in here off the wheel, either that or put a gem there. I'm not sure yet on that, haven't gotten that far. With this one, I used some of the smaller wheels and just went around the outside. In the center where the hole is, I'll put a uh, gem. That one is getting gems. And then on the giant oval, I just put those buttons in. They're just hot glued in. And I'll paint the frame a solid color and then come back and highlight this in silver, or brass, or gold. And then here, in here, I'm going to add a paper, one of my little skulls, possibly. So we've got those. That's two different techniques. The third one is I went and drew a pattern out and then went and added hot glue. I went over the pattern I did with hot glue. And I did several different variations. And what I'll do is I'll paint the whole thing a solid color and then come back with gold, silver, brass, yellow, white, who knows, and I'll highlight the caulking, you know, to get my pattern. And I've got that look there. And I got bones. Uh, those are the bones uh, I used on one of my wall panels. And then this one, I just did a series of three lines all the way around. But, you know, each one's different. And I did add some bling to a few of them, like this one here, I did the whoop de doos and I drilled for some recessed gems. This one kind of has a cobweb look to it. And then this one, I did circles, and I'll be putting a gem in the center. And then this one, I just did lines with the glue, and then recesses for uh, gems. But right now, all the frames are ready for a base coat of white, and then their color. Hey, right, we've made some progress. Uh, we got the back pieces for the back of the frames all done uh, just for the ones that get the haunter photos. The uh, back pieces for the uh, ones that are getting the RGB lights, I can't do until I get these installed. These will be cut up to ring the hole in the picture frame and I'll be attaching RGB lights to that. And uh, once I get these installed, I can get my measurements and cut the back pieces for the RGB frames. Can't do that now. Uh, but the frames are all ready for paint. I've got the plexiglass for each frame cut out. I got the back pieces for the Haunter frames done. And I got the uh, slats there that I'll use to create the box on the back of the uh, RGB frames cut out and ready to go. So my next step is paint. Time for another segment. Uh, just getting out here. It's going on about 11 o'clock. It is Saturday, I do believe. I think. I'd have to check the... In fact, let's check the phone. Let's get the date and time right here. 10.52 on January 20th. It is a Saturday. What do you know? Days run into each other and I lose track of time. Uh, we've gotten a lot of progress done on the frames. They have all cut out. Uh, any physical detailing I was going to do on them has been done. And yesterday I got their primer coat of white on. And what we're going to be doing today is adding color. And what we've decided to do is we're going to do three different colors. Black, brown, and bronze. All, and I'm going to divide the frames up into three different piles and each pile is going to get you the black, brown, or bronze. By the time we get done, I'll have three stacks of frames, black, brown, and bronze. Uh, we'll let those sit overnight and then tomorrow we'll come out here and start doing all the detail work on them. Now that the detail work is done, let's give you a look at the finished frames, or at least finished up to this point. These bigger frames, it's hard to get them into. <laughs> there we go. Kind of hard to get the whole on these uh, big frames into focus. 
But there's the uh, brass painted ones. And there's your block frames. And here are the brown frames. All detailed, ready to go. Uh, now I'm uh, sorting these out into two different piles. Uh, I've got a pile of ones that take the RGB lights and now I've got the other pile that will take the LEDs. Now these here for now I'm as far as I can go on them until I get them in the house and get the LEDs installed. Then I can install the uh, plexiglass the picture and the back piece. Uh, so I'm gonna hold off on working on these for the moment. And we're going to turn our attention to the RGB ones. Now the RGB frames, I need to get in here, install the plexiglass and the picture, and then I have to build up a frame around the inside edge that will not only hold the plexiglass and picture into place, but will also hold the RGB lights in. And then once that's done, I need, need to get the back pieces cut for these. I have the back pieces for the LED frame, or I mean, yeah, the LED frames already done. I just need to get their hanger on them. Plexiglass is done, and I got to print out the pictures yet. That's all stuff that'll get done in in the house. So our next step now is working on the RGB frames and getting the backs on. And okay, as you can tell from the backdrop, we're downstairs in my basement shop. Uh, I started out with picture frames that take the scene setter to them. Those are the ones getting the RGB lighting just like my other light boxes. Just got them finished up. I've got one step left. I wanted to show you uh, I, when I attached wood trim pieces I overhung them onto the plexiglass a little bit to hold the plexiglass and the picture into place. I'm also using them to mount the RGB lighting all the way around and I have yet my last step with these is I gotta get the back piece on which I'm getting ready to do. But I did something a little bit differently. Uh, this here is the uh, control box which runs the uh, lights. You program this with a remote to do different colors. Normally on my uh, other light boxes I've done, I usually attach this to the top of the box, what have you. With these being so narrow, there is no place for me to put the box where these won't be in hand's reach. And I like to keep these out of hand's reach. So when I installed the lighting, or was installing the lighting, uh, I made a longer pigtail. Uh, usually there's about three inch cord sticking off the end of the lights that plugs into this adapter. I went and got some wiring that I bought specifically for RGB lighting which is here and I measured off three feet so there's a three foot extension and I went through and soldered the uh, wire both onto the RGB and onto a plug that I can plug into the sensor over here so uh, anyway and these will look a little bit different once I get the back plate on you know you can I don't know if it's showing up on camera but you can see my hand through it now but uh Anyway, the, uh, the, uh, all the RGB frames are in this state right now. I've got them all over here. Uh, only thing I have left to do is attach the backing, which I am going to do next. Then we're going to start going through all the Hunter frames, which is here. <laughs> okay, well, since I had the uh, RGB frames, and I showed you that one, done. I started working on the Hunter photos. Just got my first picture frame done and I'm changing the project because of it. Here's the first one I did. This is uh, one of my old original ones but uh, you know we've got some background lighting so the picture is actually showing up 
when you get this into the dark, the lights do not highlight the picture at all. So, get it back here where it's a little bit darker and you can see the picture really doesn't show up. The LEDs do, but the picture really doesn't. And most of the pictures I've got are fairly dark. So, I think I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to install pictures into the picture frames and color quits. And I'm not even going to worry about trying to put lights in them. The, uh, which will mean the photo hall will still need some LED lighting somehow at some point. What I need is I need the lights to be behind the picture to highlight the picture, from, you know, from behind. But with them printed out on paper, it doesn't look good. I'm thinking about maybe going down to Home Depot and checking to see if they can do a uh, print pictures out on a clear film of some sort, you know, and go that route. And that's something I could do later this summer when I have the extra cash to do it. But for right now, I'm just going to install the photos into the picture frames and call it quits with this project because I've got other projects I need to work on. Uh, I'm calling the project done. This was my last Honor photo. Uh, this was uh, one of my original five. I saved it, ended it up with la uh, as last. That's the rest of the Haunter photos. Uh, we started out with five, ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 12 all together. So I added, what is it, seven new photos. Now I haven't given you a look at these or the completed RGBs. That's because you're not going to get a look at them in this vlog. I'm going to do a reveal video. So stay tuned for that. That will be uh, hopefully sometime this week. Uh, the RGB ones, those actually light up. These Haunter photos that I just finished doing, don't. <laughs> As I explained, the uh, lighting just didn't, the lighting idea I had just didn't work. So in my haunt, I am going to have to, you know, put spotlights on them. I'm probably going to run into the same problems as I did with the old frames. But I'm going to do some more researching uh, and stuff. And I may end up redoing the pictures themselves later in the season if my research proves out right. But if not, oh well. They've got better frames, which is the whole intent. I like to look at the new frames a lot better. So, uh, keep an eye out this next week. We're going to be doing, like I said, the reveal video. As far as upcoming projects, uh, the next prop building uh, vlog I do is going to be a maintenance vlog. I've got a couple of dozen different little projects I need to do. Uh, make some maintenance, some updating. In fact... Those pillars there are going to get rewired and new lights put into them. That's one of the projects. And I've got a couple other things I need to do. So, next couple of vlogs, you know, prop wise is going to be maintenance because it's going to be more than what will fit into one vlog. Uh, I am going to be not going to be working on any prop stuff probably until sometime late April. From now until mid-April, I'm going to be working on some Haunted Treasures stuff. Uh, we've got West Coast Hunters Convention on tax weekend in April. So I've got some stuff I need to work on for that. A couple of new ideas and some expansions and whatever. And I'll probably vlog a little bit of that. So you'll get some Haunted Treasures vlogs. But barring that, time to say, stay spooky. Stay toxic.